with tennis balls I sent them and I sent them with goose and duck feathers with your house dog if you get it uh, sent your tennis balls you could use vanilla extract that works just fine but uh, for my purposes uh, goose and duck work the best and when I use a chuck it it really does it simulates a, a bird getting shot there's feathers on the bird and you throw it and you know feathers are falling down to the ground and it really does it simulates a crippled bird so uh, in that case, that's one thing that I, I use them uh, use a chuck it for in a tennis ball. But uh, also, I bounce the dog the ball in front of the dog, and I teach it to be steady. Steadiness is learned. It is not. It's a trained thing. You need to train it in your dog. It is not something that the dogs are just steady. That doesn't happen. So what I do is like I, I bounce the ball. And as you see, the puppy or any dog that isn't used to this will try and jump out of sit. Correct it right at that point when it jumps out of sit, right? Now, uh, so you keep doing this and you're talking about like a few minutes for the dog to learn a game that, you know, you can use uh, for steadiness for the rest of the dog's life. So, yeah, look, it's getting a correction. Big fucking deal. Puppy, you better get your shit together. You know, you teach the dog how to play. And when the dog screws up, you give it a correction. This dog is over four months. This is the period where you really start correcting the dog. Up until that point, you, do, you don't worry about it too much. But each dog uh, starts getting corrected at a different time. And Tonka has been having a le leash correction uh, for about uh, three weeks earlier than four months. So uh, he's doing great. And watch this, how long this takes to teach him this game. Really, it is a big deal. Oh, poor, you know, cry. Oh, Peter's being mean to the dog. No, he's not. Look, he just gave, Peter just gave him the tennis ball. That's the point where the dog gets positive reinforcement. When he does what I ask. And what I ask was sit there. The ball isn't yours. It's mine. And at this point, he has learned the game. So we're looking at about uh, time, yeah, time three minutes. Now watch. He's totally picked up the game. So, you know, big deal, man. You're not hurting the dog by, uh, by giving it a leash correction. What you're doing is uh, you're training the dog to be uh, a good citizen. There, he gets the ball again because he did what I asked. Three minutes. Three minutes, people, to teach this dog, a young puppy. And as you see, an older dog like Ike. Ike is a four-year-old uh, four Finnish lab. And uh, he's very bubbly and gregarious. He's a great dog, man. He's a great guy. But as you see, look at him. Wa look at him watch the tennis ball. He wants a tennis ball, but he knows the game. He knows don't move until Peter gives it to him. So, um, really, it, this is stuff that you have to correct the dog if you want the dog to be a nice dog. And it, you're not hurting the dog. You're teaching the dog how to play. You're teaching the dog everything. So you do that with a correction and you do it with positive reinforcement. And the positive reinforcement in this case is the act of the dog getting the tennis ball in his mouth, right? So see, I'd do it eight or nine times, maybe ten times, and then give it to Ike. He's cool with it. Look at him. He loves it. He loves this game. So it's just one more example of, like, really make your dog steady. A steady dog is a happy dog. A dog that bark lunges and, you know, is stepping out. If your dog steps out of heel or your dog steps out of sit, right, if it doesn't know these as implied, then your dog is fucking up. Teach your dog to be steady and you shouldn't have any problems with your dog. We go Tonka again. We worked with Tonka earlier in the day and here we are. We're doing the same thing. And as you see, Tonka knows it. Ike knows it, and Peter knows it. But the, the thing that I'm trying to stress here is that training is repetitious. The dog needs to do it again and again and again. It's like doing judo or wrestling or anything like that. It takes a thousand times for the dog to do it right, just like the human, before it knows the command. Or, you know, if it's a human, before they know the move. So you practice, 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 and that makes for a healthy dog. And I'll tell you what, the dog that does that, it's not making decisions. It's all conditioned in, and the dog's happy because of it. And you just take the leadership role and work your dog. To work your dog does not necessarily mean that you have to run around 
or have the dog's heart rate up. You can also work the dog by making it use its mind and just making it sit there. It's a physical act of the dog sitting there that's making it burn calories, I guarantee you. The dog is working at that point. So, really, just, uh, just get your dog used to this. And remember, if you, uh, while we're on the subject, if you're going to do retrieves with your dog, this will help you uh, keep your dog steady too, is anytime your dog goes on a retrieve, it must sit and wait before you allow it to go on the retrieve. Remember, the retrieve is positive reinforcement. So anything your dog is doing, when you let it go on the retrieve, that's what you're reinforcing there. So if your dog is running around excited, and then you throw a ball, you're going to condition your dog to be excited. And not excited like Ike. Ike is a very active, all my dogs, man, I got, a lot, I got dogs with uh, very high drive. So, uh, you know, don't tell me about exercising the dog. I know how to do it. I got a German short hair and a Labrador and I've always had retrievers. I, listen, they're all the same. You got to train the dog. Get your ass out there.